for actually covering what property method we need to select we need to understand what's the ideal model and the real model so an ideal model is essentially that it assumes either ideal solution or ideal gas that will be the best case scenario the second case scenario will be it is ideal gas but it's a real solution the second case will be it is a real gas but we can treat it as ideal solution and the worst case scenario will be real gas with real solution. So once again, let's cover each one of them. Ideal gas and solution can be treated with ideal models. We know that Raoult law is good for uh, ideal solutions. The ideal gas law models perfectly well, low pressures, high temperature models. So this is a good example of a IGIS system. Ideal gas and real solution, well, you will have a liquid-liquid interaction. So this one is very important. Therefore, we must use activity. Remember what's the activity coefficient and how they interact between each other? Hopefully, yes. This is mostly for polar components. And real gas, ideal solution, something happens when we use high pressure systems. But the solutions are ideal, that is, they are non-polar. So this is, is, is mostly based on a non-polar non -polar interaction, which uses high pressure. So we can use a equation of state. Now, worst case scenario, as stated before, is the real gas, real solution, in which we have liquid-liquid interactions and real gas interactions. So we need predictive models. So let's review this one right here. C is the ideal gas. So anything that deviates from this line is not an ideal gas. In this case, you can see that, well, every gas will deviate eventually on the ideal gas. So that's why it's important to choose real gases sometimes. And also ideal gases, we will see later on that if they don't follow Raoult's law, which is a beautiful law, which relates two phases. Sometimes we have positive deviations, we have negative deviations, we have azeotropes here and here. So some cases in which Raoult's law does not follow it, then we will have real solution. Worst case scenario is once again, solutions which are real and gases which are real. So how to identify when is it a not ideal behavior? We will need to learn how to plot vapor versus liquid compositions. We should get something beautiful like this. Sometimes we will get stuff like this or even like this etc that's definitely a deviation of the ideal uh, cases now what's ideal city before it follows Raoult's law and ideal gas law mostly non-polar components which are pretty similar in size and shape which systems are not ideal well when the intermolecular interaction is too high for instance polar substances or maybe even non-polar and polar so that will be benzene versus water well that definitely is a non-ideal system so how can we identify them as stated before we will need to learn txy pxy and xy diagrams this is an example of ideal versus non-ideal behavior we have toluene which is non-polar it only differs from benzene, which is a beautiful ring right here. So they have similar properties, uh, similar carbon hydrogen interaction, they have resonance. So they are very ideal, one will say. Yes, they are ideal. And you can see that because when you model these, you will have the liquid fraction of benzene and the toluene here, no, sorry, the vapor fraction of benzene, liquid fraction of benzene. So as you can see, that's a beautiful line. This is ideal. Well, let's see what happens when we have water and ethanol, which are both polar. They are not that similar in size or group. So would you ask yourself, is this similar system or not? Well, of course, we know water is very polar. Ethanol is slightly polar. So definitely there will be an interaction. Ideally, one would say, yeah, maybe mostly in real life they are real solutions because they do differ they might be similar in sizes but the groups are different you have a chain carbon hydrogen chain for ethanol 
and you have a very polar substance for water, so of course there is interaction. Actually, there will be an ace trap. So I expected one would see or expect a line here shown, but in real life we get this, this line right here. So clearly there's a deviation. And without knowing that there is an asterisk or anything, you can simply get experimental data or go directly to the NIST table, and verify it by yourself. You get this awful line right here. It is not ideal. As stated before, guys, then we will need to compare different models and see which fits better. We have plenty of uh, real solution models, activity models, and the idea is to see which fits better our experimental data. And it's very important because real data can also be incorrect. So maybe you got your real data like this. And you will say, well, this appears to be very good from 50 plus fraction, but before it's not a good model. So maybe this is not recommended this model right here, you will say maybe it's okay when you have very high content of water, but when you have low contents of water, it's not good for a model. So you will need to check out, maybe you were checking out NRTL, let's check out Wilson, Unifac, uh, Uniquack, and so on. That will be the workshops that we will be doing later on. So previously we got this right here. So once again, literature, that's it. that is essentially the real life values. Let's say, assume those are correct. And as you can see, there is even deviation between the real life data. And if you were to choose the best one, well, which one would you choose, guys? Of course, ideal is not okay. Ideal deviates a little bit from the data. I will say maybe the orange one is okay, NRTL. The blue one, green one, not okay. So Van Laar, Wilson, not that nice. And Margul's one could say, but it deviates a lot from low, com oh, let's say low values. So if you have low mole fraction, you will not to like to model this with Margul's. I actually will choose NRTL because it models low con uh, concentration and high concentration very well. So that will be our task, guys. Select the model which fits better for the real life data.